we're we're adjusting. We're all it's we're still here in the uh in the the quarantine, the time of the lockdown. And I got to say I'm getting a little sick of these celebrities just discovering they can make stuff on YouTube. <laughs> celebrities are like the internet. We can just put stuff there. We can make stuff from our bedrooms and like mother nightmare. You, we've been here for a decade. You just got here. You, you didn't like my request this week. I guess is what you're. It's the mother, it's, they're showing up like Columbus to America. We're all like mother. <laughs> there was people here already. No, there wasn't. We just discovered <clears throat> this brand new land, the internet. I kind of like um, John Krasinski's news thing that he's doing. That's cool. Yeah, he's... He threw like an online prom for all the kids that aren't getting a prom. I thought that was really sweet. He's doing mm. he's doing good stuff. I'm, I'm just grumpy. About I'm like, who the hell do you think? Who do you think you are? Get in the back of the line. Like, I don't think any of them. I don't think John Krasinski is going to be like, you know what? I'm not going to release A Quiet Place 2. I'm a YouTuber now. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Uh, so we are we're deep into this. Um, we have places that are starting to reopen. Not really here. Not there, yeah. But Colorado is doing the soft open, but Denver's like, nah. I grow up. So you stay home. Um, we're in the populous area in the state, and you stay home. They scored. Uh, I don't know how they scored this, but uh, local news reported that uh, a national score of social distancing, and uh, my state of South Carolina was awarded an F. Charleston area, the, the Charleston the area I live in, got a C, so we okay. passed. That's passing. Everybody else is being held back for summer school because they can't stay the f Nine. away from one another. <clears throat> I really wonder, like, my nieces and nephews, like, are they all getting, like, they're all doing work from home, but, like, are they all going to get left back? Or are they moving on to the next grade? Like, we haven't, I don't know, I think we figured half that shit out yet. They canceled the SATs, so... I think it kind of speaks to how vital the SATs are, the fact they can just cancel them. Yeah. The SATs don't mean shit a lot. Let me tell you something. They <clears throat> colleges. But eh. After that, nobody cares. Let me tell you something. If you're talking about your SATs anytime after high school, you're a jack. Nine. You're just nine. Yeah. Nobody cares. All right. Well, fortunately for me, I, I, I keep saying it is weirdly reassuring that we keep having so many stories that the world are, just marches on. Yeah, these are not all about the 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 world being where we are and what's going on. Let's get that intro rolling. Where are you, intro? Where are you? Come on. Damn you. Here we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And uh, where are we starting this week? Yeah, we got this one late. This one popped in on, on Twitter. I thought you saw this one. Um, when I was a kid, I could not wrap my head around the concept of the bank. Do you yeah. have your, do you have your speakers on? I can hear it through this. I don't have Dan with me, so I didn't bother with the headphones, but I have to turn my volume down. Sorry. Yeah, that's um, when I was a kid, I could not contemplate I, just explaining compound interest to me. Yeah. How, how if you and took like, why do you give those other people your money? Yeah, if if you it, it, how like money could become more money just by sitting in a place, I I could yeah. now obviously it's you know we're paying you back for lending us your money and you know, okay that makes sense, but as a kid I'm like so I give them my money and it magically becomes more money, neat. Well, unless they decide it magically becomes less money, that's true. That, which they do sometimes. Well, this guy w was banking on that uh, that phenomenon just just. I don't think he also did not wrap his head around the entire core concept. This is my backyard. 
Jefferson County man, sher uh, sheriff man arrested after allegedly depositing cocaine into his bank. Man was arrested after allegedly tried to deposit cocaine. He thought it would turn into more cocaine. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Compound interest, but with cocaine. No. And only that's how that works, unfortunately. Drive through bank teller opened a tube to find cash and two baggies filled with cocaine. Man who deputies accused of trying to deposit the drugs says it wasn't his intention to slip the cocaine in the cash deposit box. Okay, sure. David Pandello, 34, was arrested and released pending charges. Deputies say they found additional drugs in his vehicle. How many drugs do you have when you could just accidentally drop a couple little baggies of cocaine yeah, in the pneumatic in tube? Deposit. And it sounds like it was the little pneumatic tubes. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yes, yeah, the pneumatic tube. Yeah. So, like, how do you not notice that? How many? Because cocaine is expensive. I mean, just you just got like baggies of cocaine everywhere. Is the cocaine just falling from the ceiling? Like cocaine's not cheap. So how much? Yeah, like how, how do you not notice that you just gave away two bags of cocaine by accident? Well, you notice when hoping they just put it in a safe deposit box for you. <laughs> Imagine being the cashier that day, like, huh? Well, for one thing, the first thing you're thinking is you're a cashier at a bank, and suddenly a, a a pa you open the tube and there's white powder. Yeah. You're probably not thinking cocaine. You're no. probably you're probably shitting yourself. You're like, oh my god, do I have to call the, the anti? By oh god, I'm gonna die. Um, I quit. I quit. I quit. Yeah, seriously. This job pays twelve dollars an hour. I quit. Uh. Oi. <laughs> Or, or <laughs> you just quietly slip that shit in your pocket for a rainy day. <laughs> and when that guy's like, hey, where'd my cocaine go? I'm sorry, what? You, you, you're what? I don't. What's, what's that? I don't. Did you just admit to having cocaine? <laughs> uh, now, this is like to say nobody would come in and ask for their cocaine, but I've been doing this for 10 years and I know that they would. This next story, I, I am left with some questions um, on this one. But it is one of our core stupidities that just keeps going over and over again. Have you, have, have you realized, if you're a long-time viewer of the show, you realize there are core stupidities. There are things yeah. that people continue to do. Spontaneous of one another. It's like... Weirdly, like, meat down the pants is one. And I really want somebody to run the data on that. It's like when we were kids in in elementary school and we all just sort of understood stuff like punch buggy and cooties. Yeah. And we, we all we all we had these these sort of things that just we don't know how we did. We just all knew them. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Only they're grown ups and they're idiots. <laughs> There's a secret idiot wisdom. Yeah, it's it's like how you know everybody draws that weird S design on their on yeah. their freaking. It's the same thing. So, this guy, of course, is one of the classic core stupidities, which is calling it a bomb threat to get out of work. However, these are exceptional times, as the man once said. So let's just read this. Deputies say a man in Wellington told them he called in a fake bomb threat because he wanted to get out of work. Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department arrested 36-year-old Richard Hamilton, charged him with making a false bomb threat. According to the arrest report, deputies investigating the call determined Hamilton was the caller. Continued their investigation uh, at 1100 Wellington Trace. I've got to look this up to see. 1100 Wellington Trace. What is what? What sort of business is this? Um. Probably like oh. A uh. Yeah, okay. Uh, he works. Okay. Um, Debbie say they found a vendor in an area who told them Hamilton was one of his employees. Uh, Hamilton told deputies he'd lost his phone after searching the area and Hamilton's car. Deputies say the suspect admitted to them that there was no bomb. They made the call because he was having a bad day and wanted to get out of work. 
Now, the reason I said, oh, was um, this wasn't like he went into McDonald's or, uh, you know, he wasn't working at like the, the, the retail Walmart. I Googled the location, 1100 Wellington Trace, and he was a vendor who, who was working for um, that's an apartment complex. Apparently. OK, um, bring up the street view here. So um, he was probably a contractor working at an apartment complex where people live. You called in a bomb threat to people's homes. In the middle of a lockdown, social distancing. And here's the thing. All you had to do was fake a cough. Right? We're in a motherfucking pandemic. All you have to do is fake a cough and they'll be like, don't bring your ass in. Or do you know how? Uh, well, I, I say I, I say this, but it's being me, but. Do you know how easy it is to fuck with a digital thermometer? Because you, you can fake can... A fever pretty easy. What? You can fake a fever pretty easy. Oh yeah. yeah. Shit, I was thinking you pop the thing open, you just because you can do that. But <laughs> this motherfucker. Okay, I was about to be all sympathetic when I read this story. I was like, well, you know, if he's at the Walmart, if he's at the the Publix, I can understand he's at his breaking point. Okay, still Even stupid. Then, just fake a call. Right. This, though, no. Fuck you. You're in the middle of the pandemic, and all of a sudden, someone's banging on your door. Gotta get out. No. Yeah, you do. You gotta come out right now. Bob threat. No, thank you. Blown up. Drowning in lung fluid. Blown up. So he was probably like, you know, like a landscaper or a, a contractor yeah. or something like that. And go oh, fuck yourself. How do people? And of course, they, he said, oh, I lost my phone. <laughs> and then they pressed him. He's like, OK, yeah. OK, it's right here. How did you? Honest. Fuck this guy. I mean, the good news is you don't have to go into that job for a while, for like ever. Because I mean, he's definitely fired, and you're probably going to jail. Right. And if you fake, the, if say you faked being sick, and your your employer was not having it, and they fired you, okay, but you're not in jail. Yeah. And you're not facing felony. Not pretend you're sick. Yeah. You, you're not facing felony charges. Yeah. <sighs> Dickhead. Well. Speaking of other, what the fuck were you thinking? Um, everybody who goes on a blind date, you kind of talk yourself up a little bit. A little bit. It's just, you kind of do. You know, you're selling yourself. That's what you're doing. You're, you're, yeah. Um, there's a little bit, there's a little bit of a white lie going on there. And then, wowzers. North Carolina woman sentenced for impersonating FBI agent on date. Okay. North, North Carolina woman was sentenced to three years in prison for impersonating an FBI agent on an online dating site. Uh, Rianne Brownlee, who identified herself as Agent Alexandria uh, Mancini, posted a, in a dating profile with a fake FBI badge and a stolen gun. Man, couldn't you just get an airsoft gun or some shit? That looks almost right. The U.S. Attorney's Office. What uh, if you just didn't have a gun in your dating profile picture? It's true. Brownlee had prior convictions on various charges, including identity theft. The day she got arrested in February 2019. She told a date she was working as an undercover agent in a drug case without the awareness of law enforcement. And you're not undercover. That's not how that... That's not... And cherry on top, authorities say Brownlee, 39, was also driving a stolen car when she got arrested. Wow. Um, I don't know... I don't know who you're trying to attract these days, but saying, I work in law enforcement, that's kind of like... Um, <laughs> what a, that's date repellent in a lot of ways. 
I mean, apart from a certain subset who, do you really want to date them? What do you do for a living? Well, I'm a narc. Okay, good job. Bye-bye. I just... Also, I feel like people that are real FBI agents don't flash the badge and gun in their dating profile pic. Right? I mean, probably they're probably trying to downplay it as much as possible. The only, uh, of course, I say you say that, but we both watched McMillions. Remember that? Mm. That one dude. That fucking dude. <laughs> that dude on Mc, he that that dude from McMillions. Who's apparently excellent at his job, but I don't know how anybody puts up with him. This is the dude who showed when he definitely in his dating profile pic is like. This is the dude when McDonald showed up to talk about the uh, Monopoly scam um, with the FBI so they could consult on this. He went to the meeting in a gold suit just because he wanted, just th for the fuck of it. Although it's kind of nice knowing there's people like that working for the FBI and they're not all super serious, right? Like, it's kind of nice knowing there's... no. I want them I to be know. super like, serious. It's really comforting that they're not all like super serious by the book, just the facts, ma'am. That there is kind of a wacky guy in there. I don't want a wacky guy at the FBI. Even if he's really good at his job? It doesn't matter. Okay. Because I'll tell you, you don't, and you, no one wants, you don't want to be the wacky guy at the FBI. Do you know why? You're the comic relief. You die in the third act. True. You, you give the protagonist pathos. Don't be the wacky guy at the FBI. That's what I'm just... <sighs> All right. Next up, this is one of those perfect moments in life. Just, it's a terrible thing, and it's also a wonderful thing when it happens. Because it's the stars fucking align. I love it. I, after doing this so long, I love when moments like this happen. Because these are those little mathematical to a decimal place of these actually happening and they do happen and they make me so happy that life can be like this um like a little gift from the matrix right construction crew hits underground fiber line cause its outage of call before you dig hotline Looks like someone may have forgotten to call before they started digging, and now others are unable to do so due to the outage of the Colorado 811 hotline caused by a busted fiber line. This is here, too. What? This is here, too. Yeah. Message on the Colorado 811 website says there's an outage in the communication system. It says an underground fiber line was damaged. It is causing significant outage. Construction activity caused underground damage. Uh, Colorado 811 is a nonprofit organization that was established in 1986 as the Utility Notification Center of Colorado. Utility owners and operators are required by law to be a member of Colorado 811 and register their underground utilities. So what you're supposed to do, if you're going to be doing any construction, anything around, you know, populated areas. Anything more than letting your dog bury a bone. And you start digging, you're supposed to call first to find out if there's any buried lines under the ground. And you're supposed to call them. Yeah. <laughs> Except... Do you, think anybody, do you think anybody's ever called them before burying a body? Like, I just want oh, to make shit. sure where I'm putting Big Lou here isn't going to mess up anybody's cable. Now I'm just thinking of Chris and Polly Walnuts on The Sopranos. Right? <laughs> yeah, we want to find out if there's any gas lines. No we reason. Don't miss the Jets game. <laughs> I don't want that Jets game blacked out. Oh my god, what the fucking... This is just, it's, it's a perfect little irony. It's, it's, it's so beautiful. You didn't call and you knocked out the, the, the phone line of the people you're supposed to call before. It's, it's, it's poetry. Gorgeous. I love it. It's, 
it's amazing. This this is one of those things that just you you say this is a joke. Yeah. Because the likelihood of it ever happening is so right. astronomical. Well, guess what? It happened. It, that that's amazing. I love that. I'm taking what little little joys I can. Can you imagine being the one that had to tell your boss? <laughs> Where's all the phone? None of the phones are working. What's wrong? But well, you took out the call before you dig line. Maybe you're digger. <laughs> <laughs> now let's move on to um, less pleasing things. Um, Who is jingling back there? All of a sudden, you're sitting at home, minding your own business. When man in gorilla costume charged with burglarizing Mount Saint Ju Mount Juliet home, um, a man was arrested over the weekend after he reportedly entered the wrong Mount Juliet home wearing a gorilla costume and scared a six-year-old girl. Now let's pause here. What was the right home? Yeah. Police responded, uh, and when they said a resident had confronted a man in the backyard after realizing he was just inside their home. Police said the man, who was wearing a gorilla costume, took off running. That's your next mistake. It's located by officers nearby on Portsmouth Court. If you're trying to escape law enforcement, it's a little difficult to flee when you're dressed like a gorilla. You're conspicuous. They're gonna notice. And probably very warm. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, Helios. So less King Kong and more Ding Dong. <laughs> that was good. That was that was. Oh, good. Simba, please don't take a big stinky poop in here right now. He's got to do what he's got to do. He's like a chemical weapon with <laughs> fur. I just it. Oh, mother of God. All right. For some reason, had he gone to the right house, showing up in a gorilla costume, this would have been OK. Yeah. The, uh, like with a prank? Yeah. Music thought he was at Ish. some. He thought he's at someone else's home and was looking for another individual. Why? What did you? Why? Yeah, like what? What's the story here? Now, officer, this is just a big mix-up. See, I was at the wrong house. What's the and right like, house? That's true. Maybe just tell the people that instead <clears throat> of running. That's that. Yeah, I mean, you could easily work this out. Like, look, sorry, sorry, I apologize. I did not mean. I pranked my girlfriend, and I knocked on the wrong door because the visibility sucks in this thing. You don't fucking run. The worst thing you can do in a circumstance like this is run. Because you're dressed like a gorilla. Yeah. Not only you stand out. Everyone is home. They're bored. They're looking out their windows. They see a gorilla. Everybody is calling 911. If there's a dude running down the street in a gorilla costume, you have the neighborhood watch is on full effect. But that is also the most interesting thing that has happened in anybody's neighborhood in weeks. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we got one last we are one. Bored in the house, and we're in the house bored. We got one last one tonight, and uh, um, let's let's just start with the prelude of saying "fuck this guy, fuck this guy, fucking fuck this, fuck this fucking guy." He's already, okay. So starts out, he's in trouble for assault on his girlfriend in public. So he's already a scumbag. Already fucking scumbag, all right? But he needs to make that go away. How do? Through the magic of arson! I was going to say fire. 
I'm guessing fire. Man burned down Pasadena Bar, Coconut Charlie's, to destroy evidence of domestic assault. And the very fact that that's in the headline means it didn't fucking work. Um, what evidence was at the Coconut Charlie's? Guy wanted to destroy a surveillance tape of him assaulting his girlfriend. Oh, honey. So he burned That's the not place even down. How those things work anymore. What? That's not even how those things work anymore. No. And they erased them. They're like, like, inst almost freaking instantly. What? Oh, hi, Grady. Hi, what's up? Grady's like, that guy's an idiot. This fuck, fuck this guy. While the building was destroying the fire, fortunately, the video was not. And the video assault is quite damning. So, Jamie Clemens, 35, was indicted in September, remains jailed pending a July trial on federal arson charges. Oh, wow. Hi. <clears throat> fire broke out in the early hours of July 27th, 2017 at the bar. Um, firefighters responded to the blaze, and one of them was knocked off his ladder in a backdraft. That sucks. Building was completely destroyed and had to be raised. At, on the roof and exterior patio, investigators found the remnants of multiple blast, plastic cups filled with gasoline with wicks that had been set on fire. They also found pink gardening glove, which prosecutors say was soaked in gasoline. And contained Clemens' DNA. <laughs> week before the fire, Clemens had been charged with assault related to an incident involving his girlfriend on the bar's patio. Um, a police officer witnessed the alleged assault and chased him. So this guy is at everything terrible. So even if you destroyed the tape. There's a police officer who saw it happen. Yeah. There's an eyewitness who's a cop. You know what courts love? Eyewitnesses who are cops. A search warrant for Clemens' phone revealed a text message he sent on July 26, which read, Yeah, they'll probably get the video. I'll be fucking more BS from fucking drinking. Told if I don't stop, I'm going to get in trouble. Someone else, sent Clemens a, someone else sent Clemens a text that read, So he has zero proof. Then SMFH, what's that? Shaking my fucking head. Okay, you got this. He ain't, he ain't getting far with those, those bogus charges. Just the tape is all he has, and she can say you were kidding or something, and she didn't press charges, so that's good. So there he is conspiring on his cell phone. I hate him. You fucking asshole. Just, like, alright, he already starts, he, this is already a dick of a human being. Uh, just a catastrophe yeah. of a person. This is just a big old waste of perfectly good air. Gets caught in public assaulting his girlfriend by a cop. Now Which that's not the first time. Yeah, So that's that's at the point. That That is your wake up call right there. That is the moment life is saying, hey, come on back. Turn it around. Back this way. It's not too late. It's going to suck a little, but come on back. Instead, you drive down the wrong the one the wrong way on a one way street because he said he chose fire. <laughs> this seemed like the sane response. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could get a good lawyer or fire. You're you're never getting out of the jail. No, you have seriously compounded the error. And I'm willing to bet this is not the kind of dude who's going to get good behavior. No. Just gut instinct here. How's it going to come up the arson robbery? <laughs> this is like the worst version of if you give a mouse a cookie. Yeah. It's just sort of snowballing here. If you give an idiot two brain cells. Oh my god. That's not even how security footage works anymore. Nobody uses VHS tapes anymore. There are no physical tapes. What they do is they put it on a hard drive. And 
And if it's part of a chain, it's probably uploaded to an outside server. Yep. So there are copies so, on in the cloud. Yeah. You gotta burn down a lot more buildings. <laughs> I mean, did you even watch fucking Mr. Robot? Do you know how data backups work? Shit's crazy. You're gonna Nobody's have to assemble a team. Nobody's changing out VHS tape anymore, man. What? Nobody's changing out a VHS tape anymore. <laughs> Christ. I mean, shit. I go back sometimes and I rewatch The Wire and I see them with like VHS tapes and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. All right. So that's the, the, <sighs> the first thing we learned this week is when to stop. Yeah. You get, I was, I promise you, life will flag you down and try to bring you on back. You will, there are several milestones where life will go, whoa. Hey, why, don't you, why don't you come on back from the brink, Sparky? Come on. You, you ignore that at your peril. Yeah. Um, we've learned that uh, sometimes when you're sitting at home, a man in a gorilla costume will just walk into your house. That's a thing that I can happen. hope not. That's a thing that can and has happened as we've established tonight. This is a possible thing that could happen in your life. If you weren't thinking about it before, you are now. At least I know the symbol will bite him. <laughs> um, we've learned that synchronicity is a real thing. And just... This, it, Every now and then, the Matrix glitches in an amusing way. Yes. Instead of just a terrible way. And that's nice. Um, we've learned that if you're going to fake a career to get a date, um, law enforcement, probably not the best option. Uh, because that's. Also, if you have a gun in your dating profile picture, you might as well just hold up a red flag. Right? No, no, it's okay. I'm a cop. Uh, have you seen. Doesn't domestic... matter. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the domestic abuse rates on police? I mean, I'm just saying. There's um, just a red flag. We've learned that trying to get out of work, everybody's done it. Okay. Not everybody does it by way of felony. There's and there are cases where it's better to just get fought. Just go ahead and get fired. Just quit. And there's so many easier, like my car wouldn't start. I'm sick. Yeah, I'm sick right now goes along, especially if you're working at people's residences. Yeah. I'm sick goes a long way. All you had to do is call and be like, <coughs> dry cough. Oh, fuck. That's all you had to do. I mean, and, you know, the beauty of it is you can't get tested because we don't have any tests right. in no, America. You know, tested. It's not like they would <laughs> be like, prove it. Because you're like, sure, it'll, I can get tested in six months. <laughs> uh, it's a hellscape. Uh, and finally, we've learned that compound interest does not apply to cocaine. If only. It's not like coat hangers. Never seen that joke where you leave like two coat hangers in the, in the closet, you come back a couple years later, there's like 20 coat hangers in there, you don't know where the fuck they came from. I have the exact opposite problem. Co yours disappear? I never have enough hangers. Maybe that's because I have too many clothes, but I never have enough hangers. <laughs> I would love it if they would get busy in there and have some hanger babies. It would be great. Because then I'd have hangers. Well, that's a fucking visual we can <laughs> go home on tonight. Jeez, I, I say go home. We're already here. Yeah, we're not going anywhere. <sighs> We're all going to die.